So we like to just simply keep the shares of our ETFs in our account. So what we do each week at option expiration on Friday is we'll roll over the expiring call option at expiration, uh, and that will uh, prevent us from being called. So we like to keep the shares in our account, so we simply uh, roll over the expiring option uh, so we can keep the shares in our account. So let's look at an example of a rollover, and this is for the, um, the weekly uh, ERX September 2nd call option that we sold. Remember, we sold the 31 call at 110. So um, on September 2nd, this option will expire. So we want to roll it over. And the way we do that is we close out this uh, September 2nd short call. We'll just put an order in to buy to close the expiring September 2nd uh, call, and then we'll sell to open the September 9th call, which expires one week later. So, um, so you can see one on September 2nd, uh, we closed out the September 2nd call, which was expiring, and then we sold short uh, the September 9th call at 165. So we collected a little bigger premium on the September 9th option, and the net amount was uh, $156. So. Uh, closed out the expiring September 2nd call and then sold to open the September 9th call. So that way we get to keep the uh, shares of the ETF in our account. And then on September 9th, we would close out the expiring option and we would sell to open the September 16th option, uh, which expires in seven days. So you can see uh, September 9th, we closed out our September 9th op option, and then we sold short the ERX September 16th option. We collected a 135 premium. Uh, net result was $126. So each week we close out the expiring option, sell to open the new option, and then we can keep collecting uh, premiums and keep the um, shares of the ETF in our account. And if there's a week where you forget to roll over uh, the uh, expiring option, uh, you get too busy and you forget about it. Um, if, you know, if the, uh, you, if the ETF is trading above the strike price at option expiration that you sold, then your 100 shares will be called. If it's not trading above the uh, strike price that you sold, then you'll keep the ETF shares. But if for some reason you forget to roll it over and the shares are called, then you can simply buy another 100 shares of the ETF and then sell uh, a weekly call option to reestablish your covered call. So if you forget to do it at expiration, it's not a big deal. It'll just get called and you could um, just buy another 100 shares and sell another uh, weekly call option to uh, reestablish the uh, covered call. So we went at rollover on Friday, uh, if, it's, if it's a weekly um, covered call, uh, we normally use what is known as an option spread order uh, to roll over our weekly covered calls. And option spread orders, it's, it's one order, and <clears throat> it closes out the expiring option, and it sells to open the new option and that allows you to keep the uh, shares of the ETF in your brokerage account. So we use one spread order to close out the expiring option and to sell to open the new option. And here's an example of this. Uh, this is for the um, emerging market uh, ETF symbol EEM. And what this shows is a snapshot of the actual order we use to roll over um, the expiring in this in this uh, example, the February 24th weekly option <clears throat> was expiring, and the March 2nd option was the new option. So we used uh, this spread order, um, and we bought to close the uh, five of the February 24th weekly calls, which were 
uh, expiring, and then we sold to open uh, five weekly calls, the March 2nd weekly call. So buying to close the expiring options February 24th and selling to open the March 2nd op option. So with one order, we're able to do these <clears throat> rollovers, and that can help you um, save on commission costs and also uh, we normally put these orders in halfway between the bid and ask price on, on options, and we normally can get filled close <clears throat> close to halfway between the bid and ask price. So you not only save on commissions, but you can save on the, uh, the cost of the bid ask spread whenever you trade uh, options. So um, using the option spread orders uh, again can help you reduce commission costs and the um, option bid ask spread transaction costs and also allows us to keep the um, ETFs in our account. Here's another example. This was for <clears throat> uh, TNA. That's the small cap ETF uh, symbol TNA. And we owned uh, uh, 800 shares of TNA and uh, we were short eight of the November 23rd weekly options. So we wanted to close out these expiring op op options, and then we sold to open the November 30th uh, calls, which expired one week later. So again, <clears throat> we used a spread order to uh, close out the expiring option and sell to open the new option. And uh, this allows us to save on commission costs and the uh, bid-ask transaction costs. So. Um, when you receive these, uh, if you're doing weekly covered calls and you're receiving these cash premiums every week, that that allows the covered call strategy to incur less risk than owning a stock or an ETF because <clears throat> you're receiving that cash premium every week. So let's um, let's take a look uh, at an example of a covered call trade we made and. The trade was profitable um, even though the underlying stock declined in price. So let's let's just take a look at um, a trade example, and this demonstrates how the covered call strategy is actually uh, less risky than just owning a stock or uh, owning an ETF. So in this example, our brokerage confirmation shows that we we bought 1,500 shares of Mosaic stock. That's an agricultural uh, company at an average price of 42. So you can see we bought 1,000 shares at 4205. We bought 500 shares at 4190. So this averaged out to an average price of uh, 42 for buying the 1,500 shares. And then we sold 15 of the Mosaic 40 strike call options at 790, average price of 790. So we bought 1,500 shares of the stock, uh, sold to open 15 call options at 790. So uh, selling the 15 contracts at 790, that resulted in a cash credit of $11,850 uh, before commission. So uh, sold 15 contracts. It's seven seven ninety. Uh, that translates to eleven thousand five hundred dollars in cash payouts for the option sale. So that that cash payout provides uh, downside protection if Mosaic stock declines in price. So what we did is after we initiated this covered call, uh, Mosaic stock did go down in price. So. Uh, Again, we you can see we bought the uh, uh, 1,500 shares of Mosaic stock, and we we sold the uh, 15 uh, call options at 785, and the stock declined in price. So you can see for the stock part of this uh, covered call, we had uh, an open trade loss of $1,633. So. We just took a snapshot of this covered call as an open trade uh, just to demonstrate that even though 
we had a $1,633 loss on the stock, we had a $5,187 profit on the short calls. So here's a case where we uh, initiated covered call trade, the stock went down, but uh, the um, option side of the covered call profited. So we had a net profit of $3,553 for this trade, <clears throat> trade, even though the stock went down in price. So uh, that just shows that the uh, covered calls are less risky than just simply owning a stock or um, an ETF. So let's now look at the uh, criteria we use for selecting ETFs or uh, covered calls. And uh, we're talking about uh, weekly covered calls now. So we have three simple criteria for selecting these ETFs. Uh, the first criteria would be that the ETF trades weekly options. Now, not all ETFs trade weekly options. Some only trade monthly options. <clears throat> but uh, we like to focus on the ones that trade weekly options because over the course of a year, we're going to collect 52 premiums instead of 12 premiums. So we're going to collect more option premium. <clears throat> so that's the first criteria. The second criteria is that the ETF's option premium, the weekly premium, gives you at least a 1% to 2% uh, weekly cash premium. So um, we're talking about selling weekly covered calls here. And we're, we sell the at the money uh, strike price, so we want to see at least a 1% to 2% weekly cash payout. So <clears throat> over the course of the year, if we can collect uh, a 2% payout each week over 52 weeks, then we'll receive a 100% cash payout um, that would cover the, the cost, the initial cost to purchase those 100 shares of the ETF. So. Uh, we, look, we like to see at least a 1% to 2% weekly cash payout. Uh, that really adds up over time. And, you know, if, you, if you're able to get that 2% premium um, and you do that every week, then you're, uh, you can recover the total cost that you spent to buy the 100 shares uh, of the ETF. <clears throat> and then the third criteria is that we want the price of the ETF to be trending up. And we just look at the 10-month uh, simple moving average, make sure the ETF is in an uptrend. <clears throat> so let's look at an example. Um, the uh, energy ETF symbol ERX was trading at 39.91 on Friday, December 30th. So you could um, establish a weekly covered call, uh, an at-the-money covered call, um, on that on that Friday by selling the 40 strike call, so the ETF was trading at 39.91, and if you were to initiate a weekly covered call that expired one week later on January 6th, then you would be selling the 40 strike call, as this is the uh, strike price closest to the price of the ETF. So, <clears throat> in this example. ETF trading at 39.91, we would normally sell the 40 strike call because that's closest to the price of the ETF. So a weekly covered call could be initiated by purchasing 100 shares of ERX at 39.91 and selling to open the 140 strike call, which is the at the money call. So the uh, ERX. Uh, 40 strike call, the at the money call was trading at 110 and selling that 40 strike call would generate a $110 uh, cash credit to your account. And if that, that result, $110 cash credit would be um, a weekly premium of 2.75%. So in this case, we would meet our criteria of collecting at least a 1% to 2% uh, premium each week uh, for the at-the-money call. In this, 
in this example, uh, this is actually 2.75% um, premium that week. And the way you calculate that is <clears throat> you just divide the uh, the 110 uh, premium you collected by the uh, price of the stock at the time, 39.91. So that 110 premium we collected was 2.75% of that 39.91 uh, cost of the stock at the time. So that would allow us to meet that second criteria of collecting at least a 1% to 2% uh, payout each week. <clears throat> so uh, let's, let's look further into this trade. So let's say that we, we did buy the um, ETF at 39.91 and we did sell um, the one week call at 110. Um, we would collect $110 premium and that would reduce the cost basis of the ERX shares to 38.81. So they were trading at 39.91. We sold the um, 40 strike call at 110. So <clears throat> when we received that cash, uh, $110 cash, that reduced the cost basis of the shares from 39.91 to 38.81. And um, if ERX uh, closes at 40 um, or above at that, which is the op option price that we sold, um, the uh, 100 shares would be called and <clears throat> we would sell them at 40. So if we sold the 40 strike call and the shares were called one week later, we would sell the 100 shares at 40. And our cost basis was 38.81 uh, because we got the $110 credit. So that would result in a 119 profit for the trade if the, if the uh, shares were called. So um, that that represents a 3% return for this uh, trade in one week. So um, again, if you if you buy the shares at 39. 91, he received the uh, the 110 uh, call option premium that reduces your cost to 38.81. Um, if the stock gets if the ERX gets called, uh, we have we're going to sell it at 40 minus our cost, so we have a 119 profit. And if you divide that 119 profit by our cost basis of 38.81, that's a return for the week of 3%. So. That's a pretty good return for a one-week trade. Uh, and then, of course, uh, <clears throat> on January 6th, we, we can sell another uh, option premium. So in this case, if the stock gets called, uh, we, get, we get a 3% return for the week. And if the ERX was flat at 39.91, um, that would result in a 110 profit. So... <clears throat> Again, with the stock uh, trading at 39.91, if it was flat at expiration and stayed the same, minus the uh, our 38.81 cost basis, we'd have a 110 profit if the uh, ERX stayed flat. So, if it's up, if it closes above 40, we're going to have a 3% profit for the week. If it closes flat at 39.91, <clears throat> we're going to have a. This works out to 2.75% return for the week if the stock is flat. So um, if the um, ERX was down slightly at option expiration, um, as long as it closes above the 3881 cost basis, it would result in a profit for the covered call trade. So uh, if it's down slightly, um, but closes above 3881, which is our cost basis, then we'll realize a profit. Now, any close below the 3881 cost basis would result in a loss for the uh, uh, covered call trade, <clears throat> and you could sell uh, another option uh, at expiration, another weekly option, and that would help mitigate the loss. So, uh, if uh, the ERX is up at expiration, it would it'd be a 3% return. If it's flat at expiration, it would be a 2.75% return. 
if it's down slightly and closes above the cost basis, then we would still profit. Uh, the only way we'd, we'd lose on this trade if it closes below the uh, cost basis. <clears throat> so on January 6th, the 40 strike call could be rolled over by closing out the 40 strike call and selling to open the January 13th at the money strike call uh, to collect another uh, weekly uh, premium. So again, to roll over, we would uh, buy to close the January 6th 40 strike call, which was expiring, and we would sell to open the January 13th strike, uh, uh, January 13th at the money strike call. So with the rollover, we would be closing out the expiring 40 strike call and selling another at the money call. <clears throat> so let's talk about uh, leveraged ETFs. Um, the uh, energy ETF symbol ERX is a leveraged ETF and it holds a basket of energy related stocks and it's a three times leveraged ETF. So uh, according to the prospectus, uh, the ERX ETF seeks uh, daily investment results before fees and expenses of 300% of the performance of the energy select uh, sector index. So um, this is a three-time uh, leveraged ETF. <clears throat> and with a three times leveraged ETF, if the energy sector is up 1% for the day, then ERX would be up 3% for the day if it meets its investment goal. And if the energy uh, select sector is down 1%, then it would decline 3% if it meets its goal. So again, if the a three to one leverage, if it's up 1%, you'll have a 3% move in the triple leverage ERX. If it's down 1%, you'll have a 3% uh, uh, price decline in the ERX. 